Hi everybody, welcome to your daily dose at home in honor of World Bee Day. My name is Lauren and I'm part of the visitor engagement team here at the Calgary Zoo. Today I am standing inside the NMAX Conservatory exploring some of the incredible pollinator plants that we have growing in the gardens here. But what exactly is a pollinator and why on World Bee Day do we celebrate them? There are thousands of species of pollinator animals around the world and without them, we humans wouldn't have any of our favorite foods, including coffee, tea, chocolate, fruit, even potatoes are agricultural crops that rely on pollinators. So today we're going to dig a little bit into what is pollination, some of my favorite pollinator plants here, and talk a little bit more about insects in general. Many plants require pollination in order to reproduce. When we think about animals, it's really easy. We know we need a male and a female in order to have offspring. Many plants are actually the same. Pollen is the material that carries genetic information from one plant to another so that they can successfully produce fruit and seeds in order to reproduce their plant. They need those pollinators to move their pollen from one plant to another. So if you have many species of tree growing in your yard, they might leaf out, they might look beautiful, but they would never produce seeds unless there is another tree nearby that has some pollination happening where that pollinator animal is helping out. There are pollinator animals all over the world and some you might not even expect. We know about birds, we know about butterflies, but what about things like bats? Or even here at the Calgary Zoo, the world's biggest pollinator is the black and white rock lemur. But today we are celebrating bees. Did you know there are over 300 species of bee here in Alberta? That's a tremendous diversity of bee. Many of our pollinator insects have huge diversity. Where did that come from? Pollinator plants appeared on our planet millions and millions of years ago in the mid Cretaceous when dinosaurs were roaming around. And what we see over the last 50 million years is something called the coevolution of the insects and the angiosperms. Angiosperms are flowering plants. Insects, we know we're insects. And what happened over millions of years is as the plants started to diversify, we see new types of flowers and new types of leaves, the insect evolution responded. So over 50 million years, we see this huge explosion in diversity where we have certain types of insects that only pollinate certain types of plants or pollinators that are adapted to attract certain insects. One of my favorite examples of that is right behind me. We look at this flower up here, it's called a Dutchman's pipe. When you look at it, it doesn't really look like a flower at all. It actually looks like a piece of meat and it smells like one too. It is actually meant to attract flies that are attracted to things like carrion or dead meat. So the Dutchman's pipe is pollinated by things that are looking for a meaty kind of smell. So it produces a scent like rotten meat. Isn't that cool? This plant here is one of the species of lantana and it has really incredible flowers meant to attract pollinators. They actually are different colors depending on how much nectar is inside their flower, which is kind of like flower to insect communication. So these insects, these angiosperms, these flowering plants, they're actually talking and communicating with each other in a language that only they understand. I think this is incredible. We have so much to thank pollinators for on our planet. I would not be able to get through my day without my cup of coffee. And so today, if you have pollinator food that you love, thank a pollinator. We can also do our part to plant pollinator friendly habitats right in our own backyards or our balconies to create a little bit of that urban green space that allows these animals to have a home and a place. Thank you so much for tuning into this edition of the Daily Dose at Home in honor of World Bee Day. We've got a link to a really cool bee activity that includes a little bit of dancing. Bees actually dance to help communicate with each other, so you can check that out in the activity PDF. Thank you for watching and thank you for supporting wildlife conservation.